The following KQED production was produced in high definition. There was a time not that long ago when people felt that the playing field was level. Back then, the only way to enhance your body was to combine discipline and hard work. But as the pursuit of human peak performance strays further into bioscience, technology is calling into question the very nature of what we mean by human potential. Craig Caesar is a professor of kinesiology at San Jose State. And I like to think of us all as an athlete on a continuum. We're all involved in what's called the training and athletic development of our human potential. Today, coaches, trainers, and sports doctors are racing to discover natural ways to get the most out of their athletes. And in the process, they're beginning to understand the actual mechanisms that build the body's strength and endurance. During exercise, a lot of things happen within the body. Things such as heart rate goes up, uh, core temperature tends to increase, uh, we have increased utilization of, fuel, of various fuel substrates within the muscle tissue. There's increased circulation throughout the body. It's a stress, but it, it's a positive stress in that over time the body adapts to that stress and enhanced human performance is the outcome of that adaptation. The relationship between exercise and developing physical strength is clear. But modern science now makes it possible to go one step further. By analyzing specific factors like oxygen intake, metabolic function, even the efficiency of movement, coaches can now shape a training regimen for each individual athlete. The tests that, that, that we do in this laboratory can be, first of all, used initially as a screening to develop an optimal exercise prescription program for the individual. Okay. And so I think with technology over time, we've been able to evolve into a very s specific type of sports conditioning that can be tailored to the individual needs. For top athletes, training has become a technical field, and many reach out for help navigating this new and complex landscape. Their guides are often sports doctors, like Dr. Sonia Bell. Today we're going to work with a soccer player who is now going out for the U.S. national team, possibly for the Olympics in 2008. He is coming to me to help in his flexibility and his speed and agility. The stakes can be high. For these professional athletes, physical excellence is often the primary focus of their lives and incomes. But as the science of peak performance has progressed, so have the potential pathways to strength and endurance. We started to look at ways that we can enhance our training by using perhaps additional supplementation. Uh, and it could be, for example, taking various types of uh, performance enhancing substances have quite often complemented training. Some of which, of course, perhaps are legal, some perhaps are, are not legal. For years, the use of illegal supplements has garnered headlines with cries of foul play. Record-setting baseball players and other elite athletes have made human growth hormones and blood doping household phrases. But steroids have attracted the most attention. Steroids are naturally occurring complex hormones, critical for keeping the body running smoothly. Different steroids perform important roles in the body's reproductive system. They also build muscle and help control the immune system. The type of steroids most often associated with athletics are called anabolic, which means to build. Steroids such as testosterone aid in building muscle by increasing protein synthesis and allowing muscle fibers to repair faster and grow larger. And this is naturally produced. We synthesize it, uh, both male and female. 
testosterone is produced and then goes to a receptor site. A receptor site is one in which there is uh, somewhat of a lock and key phenomenon going on where you have the lock being the receptor and the key being testosterone going to the site, activating it, and then it is converted um, via various enzymes into two different particular components, DHT, dihydrotestosterone, and, and estradiol. And then these two are essentially important in various aspects of growth of bones, um, tissues, and uh, our nervous system. And when we take exogenous testosterone, we actually supersaturate the lock and key system. Exogenous steroids are synthetic steroids added to the body's natural system. Although they mimic this lock and key system and trigger physiological responses similar to testosterone, they do not leave an obvious chemical fingerprint. So these days, finding cheaters takes an athletic CSI lab. Terry Sheehan, an analytical chemist at Agilent Technologies in Santa Clara, is on the front lines in the battle to curtail illegal steroid use. There are synthetic organic chemists and people in the area of pharmacology that are always trying to create the next new steroid or the ne next new compound that has steroid type functions. And that sets up a bit of a cat and mouse type game and trying to determine, oh, is this a steroid? Is this a new steroid? Uh, we know what should be there, uh, but you know now something new has appeared and the, the game begins. Agilent's equipment has been used to monitor athletes in the Tour de France and World Cup soccer. And it will also be used to test thousands of samples at the Beijing Olympics. We're playing a game as analytical chemists to try to dig the needle out of the haystack. And uh, we've gotten better tools to dig into the haystack. You know, so, um, but as we've become more sophisticated in our analytical technology, the people that are trying to do the doping have become more sophisticated in their organic chemistry, synthetic organic work, and their pharmacology and everything else. So it's quite an uh, interesting high-tech game that goes on. It's a little James Bondish. In the search for steroids, officials test urine samples using, and it's a bit of a tongue twister, a combination of gas chromatography mass spectrometry, or GCMS, and liquid chromatography mass spectrometry, known as LCMS. These tools allow scientists to tell with pinpoint accuracy who's been cheating. We refer to mass spectrometry as being a, a fingerprinting technique, and let's uh, describe how this fingerprint is created. For each one of the molecules, it has a certain number of carbons, certain number of hydrogen, certain number of oxygens. So we can add that up and come up with the molecular weight of the compound. And in the case of GCMS, if we were looking at testosterone, we can very precisely chop the molecule up into smaller pieces. For complex samples like urine, the chromatograph first separates the mixture into a sequence of compounds. That's then put through the mass spec, which identifies the different pieces by their unique molecular pattern. We keep dividing and dividing and dividing until we get to a specific identification of the compound that we're looking for, or we think that might be present in that sample. The needle comes out of the haystack to us. With a complete breakdown of the chemical makeup of the sample, they're able to compare it to a database of molecular fingerprints and tell in minutes if an athlete is taking an illegal substance. There are new technologies that are developing mass spectrometry, and that means it's going to be almost impossible for people to come up with compounds that cannot be very quickly detected and identified with an absolute level of confidence. But is the detection of steroids really such a huge concern? Why differentiate between anabolic steroids and, say, vitamins or protein powder? For most experts, the answer is clear. While supplements like vitamins focus on feeding your physical machine the optimal fuels, anabolic steroids actually change the body's fundamental metabolic processes. The problem is it's, it's taking the fun out of athleticism. We want to, you know, level the playing field and everyone should, you know, be starting at a natural level so that we don't have people that are, that have a competitive edge. 
And there's a deeper concern. The side effects of steroid use, liver damage, heart damage, dramatic mood swings, and severe acne, to name a few, are not just threatening professional athletes. It has a trickle-down effect. Many adolescents hoping to rise to the next level are using anabolic steroids to gain an early edge. But at what cost? Experts worry that these young athletes' futures may be plagued with serious health problems. How far are we, as a society, willing to go to be better than the rest? In the greater picture of things, to truly become number one, you must constantly strive to surpass yourself, not the competition. That's where the challenge of life exists, to be the best person you can. Keep Quest free. Discover more and donate at kqed.org slash quest.